after watching this video, you will understand when to start with a one product store, when to start with a general store, and when to start with a niche store. Somewhere around the end of the video, I'm also gonna give you a tip how to customize your Shopify stores without any effort. So I'm gonna literally tell you exactly how you can change around so many things on your description and your, on your product page without actually implementing some kind of crazy funnels or Zipify or whatever. You can do that on Shopify with this simple hack. So let's get started. So let me answer you the question of when you should start with a one product store and when with a general one. First of all, you have to understand that it does not really matter which one of these you use. However, there are some instances where it's just better to use specific types of stores. Two things you should keep in mind. Number one is most people who come to your store are not looking at the store itself. They're only looking at your product page. Basically, when you do a Facebook ad, you're gonna link them immediately to the product page and that's the only thing they're gonna see. Around 80% of the people actually stay on the product page without clicking away on the store. You have to understand that and understand that the main part about your store is only the product page itself and not all the rest which is inside of the store. So put the most amount of effort of the store into the product page. The next thing you have to understand is that if you do a general store, then don't start customizing 30 products and making perfect product descriptions for every single one of them and then just go with one and the other ones are there for fillers. You don't need to have perfect product descriptions or variants or pictures on the store on the products which you're not even selling. So the main thing on a general store is gonna be the one product which you're gonna sell, that's also the one which is gonna be visible on the very first glance on the, on, the, on the store page itself, and everything should still be based around that one product. And if it doesn't work, you basically change it around to the next product. So when should you start with a general store? Normally, a general store is typically for people who have a little bit more budget and less time. If you have more budget and less time, then you should go for general stores because they're just easier to manage if, if the product doesn't work. And if you have a higher budget, it's not a big deal to test the next product and the next product until you make it work. And you basically just have a little bit of a less of a conversion rate, which is there on a general store. It's, it's a tiny difference, it's not crazy, but there is for sure a lower conversion rate. However, because you don't have that much time to customize every single product, I would recommend using a general store in this scenario. If you have more time but less budget, I would for sure go for a one product store or a niche store. This is probably the better way to go because if you're on a lower budget, you need to make more things perfect, okay? And with a one product store or a niche store, it's just easier to manage in the very beginning if you have more time. Also, you should name the niche or one product store, give it a general name. So if you give it a general name, if the product, for example, doesn't work, it's very easy to rebrand the whole thing and you don't have to buy extra domains, which are gonna cost you some money and if you're on a low budget, you don't need extra expenses. So select a general name, like for example, even if you would select, I don't know, Happy Penguins, that would mean that you can sell cat products, dog products, and baby products, for example. It's, like, it would make sense to sell all of these products because it just, like, it, it sounds fine. And if you would name the store dogowners.com, obviously it's only specifically for dogs and you would have to rebrand the whole store after um, the product doesn't, didn't work in the first place. If you actually do it like that, you can rebrand a store very, very quickly. And if one product doesn't work, you immediately switch to the next one on the same store and it's not even that big of an effort. You maybe put in like three, four hours and everything is done again. So one mistake I've always seen people do who come to me when they basically just start out is they use too many colors on their product page. And that's actually an important thing because you should not make your product page look very scammy and you should not have like neon colors everywhere. You should not have like a green, red and blue text in one product description. You should normally only stick to one color. So the whole thing should be based around one color. For example, you have an orange banner, orange um, add to cart button, an orange like some elements in the pro on the product page and you don't have more colors than that. You only have orange and obviously black text and that's it. The next thing is you should only have one scarcity element. And that's also a big mistake I've seen people do. For example, they take multiple scarcity elements as in they have like a countdown timer and a bar which says, okay, we only have five pieces left and also we only have like 10 minutes left until the end, the end of the deal. That just looks scammy and one scarcity factor is more than enough to convince people that, okay, I need to hurry up if I want to get this and two or three just look too scammy, so don't use them. So also on the product page, it's really important to have a lot of visuals. So don't have like a text overloaded product page where you basically have like bulks of text everywhere. I would only have like bullet points and paragraphs 
and also in between the paragraphs you have you, you should have pictures or gifs so normally how you would do it is you have like a little paragraph on the top have a gif then another paragraph then another picture then another paragraph then picture then maybe another gif or something like that where you have visual cues with what this product is doing when you make the product description keep a couple of things in mind Number one is that you should not take hours and hours and hours on making a perfect product description as in every word is going to be perfect, no mistakes nowhere. Look, it's not a big deal if you have some kind of flaws on your product page when you start out. It's not that big of a deal. However, what I would actually recommend you when you do the product page is focusing on benefits instead of features. For example, if you would have some kind of weight loss products, let's say like a resistance band. I would not mention in the very beginning of the description how this resistance band is super durable and it's really easy to use, you can use it everywhere. All of these things I would not mention in the beginning of the description, but more on the bottom. Because the most important part is why are the people buying it? And you have to describe how your product is actually going to make them lose weight. So that's really important and you have to put that on the top of the description. So the first like three, four paragraphs are only going to be about that. And then you start adding logical elements of, on why they should buy this product as in why they should specifically buy this product and not another resistance band. So that just comes later. And one really, really good trick I want to give you here is using Canva to make product descriptions. If you do a product description on Shopify, as in you go to Shopify and write everything into the space where you should normally write the description, you're gonna see that it's very hard to customize everything. You cannot put like perfectly designed arrows somewhere, or you cannot use specific fonts which you wanted to use by yourself. You cannot do all of that, and Shopify just gives you a couple of options. It's, it's pretty annoying. So what I would do is I would go to Canva, make a perfect description with all the fonts you want, with all the text you want, with all the pictures you want, and then just take a screenshot and just copy and paste the screenshot into the description. So people will not notice if it's actually written there or if it's just a picture if you have a white background. It's exactly the same. And I would just always do that to make it more clean. So with all of that being said, you have to understand that the store is not the main focus. The focus of yours should be on the product and on the ads. That's going to be the two things which are actually going to be the game changer for you if you have a losing or a winning product. So all the store tricks I told you are going to increase the conversion rate. They're going to make everything better. However, they're not going to make a losing product a winning product. They're maybe going to make a break-even product a little bit profitable or a profitable product more profitable. That will happen for sure. But it's not going to be this 180 degree shift where everything now is perfect. If you want to have a complete structure from A to Z, on how to select products, how to create product pages, how you create really good ads, how you run Facebook ads, how you scale, how you brand, how you do everything properly, then sign up for a free consultation session with me personally. You can click the link below and we're actually gonna have a one-on-one -on -one discussion. If it seems like a good fit, we're gonna get started to work together long-term. And yeah, basically click the link below, sign up for that and see you there.